Okay, where was I? So I'm in the cell lot now because he just got to the gate. So he's gonna let me know when he's ready to be picked up because I don't know this airport. So I'm gonna wait till I'm told where to go. So anyway, um, back to it. I moved to Colorado, experiment with drugs, all that stuff. Um, have a crazy relationship with this psycho man. He was like eight years older than me. So clearly there's a lot of identity issues. If I knew who I was, if I knew how loved I was, if I knew how secure I was, if I knew what I know now, right? You hear that all the time. Th things would be so much different. I'll tell you the truth. If I had Jesus, things would be a lot different. Uh, cause that's who I have now. So fast forward, I move back and I run into my husband. Then he was just a classmate of mine that I graduated high school with. Um, we were 23. We met at the bar, of course, because what do you do in your hometown when there's not a lot of people you drink, right? That's what you do. So he and I had a lot of fun doing all of those things. Um, and then, so we had a lot of fun and, um, He's texting me a lot, so pardon me. We ended up moving downstate together. So we lived together for, okay, so three months into our relationship, we started living together, okay, in his dad's basement. The whole house was a basement at the time. No, it wasn't, just the basement. So we lived in his father's basement, and so obviously not married. So I had a lot of things backwards. Of course, we did wait to have kids, though, so bonus. <laughs> so we get um, married at 27. We come from completely different homes. So I wanted to please him in so many ways because he was the only one that I knew consistently in my life and wanted to please him, right? I told you I went from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend. Um, and so I was kind of codependent in a, in a way, right? I needed a companion to make me feel complete. I needed attention. I needed someone to tell me nice things. Not that he did all the time. Um, in fact, he's getting better at words of affirmation since that's my love language, but, um, we still both have a lot of growing to do. So, um, our third pregnancy went terribly wrong. And that's when my life got real. That's when identity became no question for me anymore. I mean, I always believed in God, okay? I knew uh, the religion side, not the relationship side, though, that you could actually have a relationship with Jesus. So, so I learned this from people we respected, people remember the mentorship thing. So we found some people who were mentors to us and they loved Jesus and they were a great example of how we wanted our marriage to look and how we wanted our parenting to look and the kind of house they had and not to say that you have to believe in Jesus to get a nice house it's not what I'm saying it was just a life we get we had a picture of a life we wanted to have and so um, we began to understand this Jesus thing was real and um, fast forward to my third pregnancy uh, I carried the baby until five months and lost the baby. I'm not sure what the gender was. We never found out um, with our babies. So um, when that happens, I have to be delicate here because I know that there's a lot of people who are still in my life, in my life who are then, who are still in my life now. Um, I felt like nobody showed up for me when this happened, okay? My husband was traveling. He was in Boston at the time. And, um, and my mom, she drove four hours south just to be with me because we were in Detroit area at the time. Um, in our first home, had our first two kids, figured this pregnancy would be just like theirs, and it wasn't, okay? I went to my anatomy scan, my ultrasound, and discovered baby was dead. Um, I was devastated and uh, my mom was in the car right away and she came down to be with me she slept with me that night they gave me what I needed to start uh, the process of expanding my my uh, cervix for the D&E that I was gonna have the next day 
and I ended up break my water ended up breaking and I gave birth to my dead baby in my toilet and my mom had to scoop baby out of the toilet because I couldn't muster the strength or will to do it and I can't imagine being in her position having to do that I said I wasn't gonna get emotional gosh um but I'm going to tell you something. In the worst moments of your life, you can find the brightest light. Because you know who did show up? You, other than my mom, you know who was there the entire time? The only one who was with me other than the ultrasound tech in that room that day? Jesus. He was there. And I never felt him so real than in that moment. Because you know what? I'm going to finish with this. There's been other things, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, so like this was the hinge point. Now I am who I am. I love who I am because I have the confidence, the faith, and the hope that I am loved. I am wanted. I am fearfully made. I have, I am the apple of my Father in Heaven's eye. I don't have to try to make people pleased anymore. I don't have to try to make people proud anymore. I have nothing that I, I have, there is nothing that I need to do other than live for Jesus. And you know what? He doesn't expect anything of me except to love you, to love myself because he created me and to love you. And that's all I want to do. He is higher than everything else in my life, even my marriage. For a while, he wasn't, but he is now. And since that moment, the darkest time of my life, I haven't looked back. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you, though. I mean, social media is a real trip, you guys. If I had social media back when I was trying to figure things out, I don't know that I'd still be here. I really don't. The bullying, the uh, courageous typing, like, yeah, there's a, there's a lot you can say behind a computer screen. Yeah, you go. You got lots of balls. Congratulations. You typed something. You didn't do anything face to face. That's nothing. The bullying that happens, the cyberbullying, the trafficking, the the uh, pedophile. You know how mad that makes me, but you know what? When I was little, I don't think that I would have survived it. I really don't. That's why it scares the pajibis out of me. Though I do have more Jesus than I ever experienced growing up n at no fault of my parents, but I'm hoping that Having a little bit more of a foundation with my kids will help them along this this generation because, wow, I am out of my league. I just don't know how to do this. I just don't know how to do this. But I, you know what I do do? I just let, I did say do do. Sorry. I give it all to God and that is such a relief. You know, he lent me my children. They're not mine. They're his. He wants more for them than I do and I want the world for them. So I have trust. I have faith. I don't have pixie dust, though. And I'm in Orlando. I should try to find some. Anyway, you guys, I just want to encourage you to, um, to find your identity in what matters. You have no reason to think less of yourself. You have no reason to believe the labels people give you, even the ones that you want to wear as a badge.